Good afternoon or good morning, uh, whatever is your time. Thank you for being here. I'm Paz Artasa Regan with Catholic Climate Covenant. Uh, we are waiting for a couple of our uh, panelists to still um, come on, but we will be getting started because we are very full today. Uh, so I hope you're all here for Catholics Take Action to Protect Our Common Home, Laudato Si. Uh, we have an information-packed uh, webinar. Uh, we planned this webinar before the new realities of the pandemic, and we, our panelists have all modified it to fit our current reality. Uh, and because of our current reality, uh, we are going to start with prayer. Uh, this is a prayer from the U.S. Catholic Conference of Bishops, a mm -hmm. uh, prayer for solidarity uh, during the times of COVID-19. Uh, so if you will please uh, center ourselves. Remember that God is always in our presence, especially in times like these. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For all who have contracted coronavirus, we pray for care and healing. For those who are particularly vulnerable, we pray for safety and protection. For all who experience fear or anxiety, we pray for peace of mind and spirit. For affected families who are facing difficult decisions between food on the table or public safety, we pray for policies that recognize their plight. For those who do not have adequate health insurance, we pray that no family will face financial burdens alone. For those who are afraid to access care due to immigration status, we pray for recognition of the God-given dignity of all. For our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray for shared solidarity. For public officials and decision makers, we pray for wisdom and guidance. Loving God, during this time, may your church be a sign of hope, comfort and love to all. Grant peace, grant comfort, grant healing. Be with us, Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, as all of you know, we also do some housekeeping right before we get started. Uh, the video is being recorded uh, and we will be spend, sending a link to everybody uh, within the next couple of days. We are also uh, sending you some handouts that are available in the handout box in your control panel. Uh, those you can look for now as well as uh, receive them in your email. If you have audio issues, it's most likely due to your Wi-Fi connection. Uh, if that is so, you can try going to that audio box and clicking phone and connecting via phone for better uh, audio. There will be Q&A after all the presentations. You may submit them in writing in the question box on the right side of your panel. Please indicate to who the question is directed. Uh, that makes it easier during the Q&A. Given that we have almost 200 people uh, online and uh, very limited time, we may not get to your question uh, in the session, but I promise that one of the panelists or I will respond to you. The in, during the introduction of the presenters, I am going to go very quick. Their bios are available as a handout, and I will include the full bios in the follow-up email as well. So as I said, we have a very full uh, list of panelists. Uh, this is who they are. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go through their bios, but as you see, you will receive it both in this format and in the handout and in the email. First up uh, will be a presentation from a parish, uh, Pi St. Pius X in Granger, Indiana. Uh, and we have two presenters from the parish, uh, Dr. Delena Wilkin and Chuck Buter. Uh, Delena, Chuck, uh, you may take it on from here. Thank you, Paz. Forwarding. So St. Pius X Catholic Church is a large parish in northern Indiana. Shortly after Pope Francis released Laudato Si, Dr. Philip Sakimoto presented a series of talks on climate science 
and how Catholics can respond to the Pope's call to act. There is a lag in the advancing of the slides. From that dialogue emerged our core creation care team, which has been meeting nearly bi-weekly. We always end each meeting with someone reading a randomly selected paragraph from Laudato C. Because each paragraph stands as a prayer unto itself. Advance. Shortly after our group began, we created a mission statement, which you can see here. To do so, we adopted and modified the St. Francis Pledge and added the additional mission of educate. We would like to share some of our past events in all of these areas. Banana Peels and Climate Change was a program by Sister Damien Marie and Dr. Dr. Philip Sakimoto that reflected on our separations from nature and introduced a daily examine. In their words, the daily examine is a process of weighing the day's events to ascertain how one's attitudes and behaviors measure up to certain moral principles. The examine inspires us to do small acts of caring in our daily lives. The first presentation of Banana Peels and Climate Change is on YouTube and Paz has a link. Here in Indiana, we're constrained by a state house that does not favor solar energy. After endless talk and hearing wildly divergent estimates on costs and savings, our team finally decided to ask some installers for an estimate. Highly recommended. Take a first step and ask for a few quotes. We then proposed an initial proof of concept on a pole barn to power the rectory. While the inaugural solar panels are only a modest gesture, now the school kids are starting to ask questions about renewable energy. Here are some photos of recycling at the parish picnic, which we have done for the last two years. Hundreds of people attend this annual event and previously no recycling efforts had ever been made. We felt this task would be a very impactful thing for our parish and also a good opportunity to shine a light on our creation care team, Laudato C, and as well as the newly installed solar panels. We definitely met some challenges, especially in the first year, but we were able to make some improvements going forward. The two most important tips I can share with you are to have good communication with your maintenance staff and picnic organizers, and to have plenty of volunteers to help with hands-on tasks, such as monitoring the recycling and disposal of the recycling. And again, we have attached a PDF that discusses tips for this, as well as some of the other events that we, are, that we will be discussing. Pause if you could advance. Uh, this is actually my family at an Earth Day tree planting. What really helped to make this event a success was in addition to inviting parishioners, we reached out to the middle school science teacher and a local Boy Scout troop. By doing this, we were able to get many kids involved, we got lots of trees planted, and we created a great sense of purpose and community. And speaking of community, that was our community garden. Yeah, and you can go forward. Yeah, this is actually some pictures from an Earth Day Fair event. It was a very fun and educational um, event that we set up in our school gym. We had multiple hands-on stations for adults and kids of all ages. It was very well attended, and I believe because, again, we engaged students and teachers to participate it was held conveniently right after a mass time and we served local ice cream. Thanks. Uh, here we're promoting LED light bulbs. We built a display showing the colors and comparing the energy lost to heat between incandescent and LED bulbs. Kids and adults alike enjoyed the hands-on experience of measuring this impressive difference with an infrared heat thermometer. We strongly encouraged everyone, and I encourage you, to avoid the bluish light of the 5,000K LED bulbs. 
The last prong of our mission statement is advocate. And these are pictures from the 2017 Climate March and CCC Lobby Training Day. It was such a great opportunity to meet and be inspired by other CCT groups across the country. And some of you may even see yourselves in these pictures. I learned so much from the training day and was able to use this knowledge when our group met locally with our Senator and Congresswoman's field representative. So now looking to the future, um, our group has begun discussions about creating a comprehensive sustainability plan to tackle recycling, waste management, energy, and other topics rather than approach them in a piecemeal manner. Our plan would include short, medium, and long-term goals, and we would work with parish staff to prioritize our actions. And we expect that our parish leaders will be very receptive as our new church was built with extensive energy saving measures. For the five-year anniversary of Laudato C, we have had to rethink things and we will be asking our pastor, Father Bill, to give a special online message and prayer. We have multiple forms of media to reach parishioners in isolation now. Going forward, the key is content. One campaign will be to do a home energy audit as a family activity, which could segue into a parish campus activity when normalcy resumes. We are, if you could advance, we are still scheduled to meet online uh, with elected representatives. Notice in this picture on the table are two books, Drawdown and Laudato C. We give our elected reps a copy of each. Before we meet the officials, we look into proposed state legislation or look to the CCC for specific national legislation about which we can make the ask or issue a statement. And lastly here, just a few more images of some of our activities uh, about which we can discuss later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me uh, repeat that if you're having audio issues, uh, please mute. Um, whoever just came on, we have a very big uh, background noise. There, whoever turned that off, that's good. Um, I'm sorry that I'm going to have to, at this point, advance. Uh, our presenter has not uh, signed up yet. Hopefully she will. So I will advance uh, the Sister Pat Bergen's presentation. Uh, she was supposed to talk about how the Congregation of St. Joseph uh, has been doing this work. Hopefully she will be here uh, soon. Uh, the next presenter, uh, so that he'll get ready, is uh, Dr. Phil Thompson uh, with Seattle University. Uh, Phil, uh, it's all yours. Let me know if I need to advance, but I will give you at this point uh, control of the panel. Okay, thank you. And good morning, everyone. It's still morning here in Seattle. Um, and so, uh, pass to advance. Will I be able to you have control of mouse uh, at the moment. If you go to your uh, bottom uh, right, left hand, there's some uh, arrows you can control yeah. there, or you yeah. can say next one for, and I'll do it for you. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. Thank you. Well, again, good morning, everyone. And it's um, a pleasure to be uh, presenting to you today to tell you a little bit about the uh, plans that we have for Earth Month at Seattle University. So many of you may not have heard of Seattle University before. It is a uh, Jesuit institution, one of the 28 Jesuit schools in the US, universities and colleges in the US. And we have uh, something called the Center for Environmental Justice and Sustainability. So CEJS, the Center for Environmental Justice and Sustainability at Seattle U. Welcome to uh, see all the things that we're up to. If you go to seattleu.edu slash CEJS, but right in front of you, you see um, our Earth Month logo. So one of our students uh, came up with this uh, logo for this year. And all of our activities um, for campus uh, can be found at seattleu.edu slash Earth Month. Of course, this year, uh, because of COVID-19, we have had to modify our plans uh, a little bit. We had intended, of course, to do um, a lot of community activities 
uh, which we're going to have to uh, reschedule. But we did um, plan to do uh, a lot of online um, activities anyway. So maybe, um, let's see here. Yeah, uh, okay, there it goes. All right, so for Earth Day itself, um, we have been coordinating with the Earth Day Network. So if you go to earthday.org, um, you'll see uh, the many activities that the Earth Day Network uh, has been planning. They have had to uh, change their schedules. Originally, they were going to have uh, a million people in Washington, D.C. celebrating Earth Day. Uh, Jimmy Fallon was going to be the host of Earth Day. And so I know that they're busy uh, reconfiguring their plans to uh, adapt to our current situation. Um, at Seattle U, in addition to, so we're going to, no matter what, at 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific time on Earth Day, we're going to uh, have a live simulcast of the Earth, Earth, EarthDay.org uh, activities. Um, so folks can, um, can watch what's happening with the Earth Day network. And then at, uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific time, uh, we're going to have what we call Earth Talks. So we've had um, a number of uh, a number of presentations that have been proposed by members of our community, students, faculty, staff, as well as uh, folks uh, in and around Seattle, to give <laughs> to give an Earth Talk. So an Earth Talk is is kind of like TED Talks. You're probably familiar with those. So really, just a five minute talk um, about what you or your organization is doing to. Uh, to help move forward in environmental justice and sustainability work that you that you may be doing. Um, so we're looking forward to those Earth Talks. I think they'll be uh, they'll be they'll be good. Uh, and then uh, let's see. So zero waste day. So we're gonna uh, our campus goal uh, is gonna be to have zero waste on Earth Day, um, and then just to prove to ourselves that in fact this is something that we can do. Uh, for those of you not familiar with this term zero waste day it's not exactly what it sounds like in that um, zero way you've achieved zero waste if you have 90 percent diversion of waste from a landfill so uh, that's uh, that should be pretty easy if there's no one on campus we have uh, we have um, gone purely online for all of our spring quarter from here on out so um, I imagine that's going to be a, an easy one for us to achieve uh, and then at noon uh, on Earth Day, uh, a group called Interfaith Power uh, and Light is going to have a prayer. And so you can go to the Interfaith Power and Light uh, uh, webpage. In fact, we can probably share that link with folks, um, pause if they need it, um, to sign up for that prayer uh, that's really to show solidarity among folks all across the country, or really around the world. Uh, on Earth Day, so I think um, that'll be a that'll be a good um, a good way to uh, to show solidarity on Earth Day. Let's see here. Oops. So um, I have really just a couple more slides. Oops, we keep going. There we go. So in terms of education, so we have educational activities and then hands-on activities. So in terms of education, uh, we're asking our, our faculty to make climate a class conversation. So we have developed um, a, a lot of resources and really we've tried to consolidate them into a one pager. So if there are folks out there that would like to have access to that one pager, they can they can go to our uh, Earth Month website and um, and access those, but it's really just ways to uh, to start that conversation with people around climate action. Uh, other ed educational activities that we're going to have uh, include uh, we have an Earth Month student film competition, uh, and then there's something called the it's the, the Washington Higher Education Sustainability Consortium. So WAHESC, it's a mouthful. Uh, so we are having a virtual conference on April 29th, um, and so. Uh, that's open to really anyone who wants to um, to join. Uh, but what's nice about that is we're going to hear about all the different things that uh, universities across the state of Washington are doing 
uh, to take action uh, for climate change. Uh, we're also um, on campus, um, although maybe we'll have to delay this, this one, but it's, it's called, we call it the Resource Conservation Traveling Display, but it's, a, it's just a display that helps um, uh, highlight how people on our campus are using energy and water. So just to start that conversation, how much energy and water did we use last year in, in, in this building, say, and how are we doing uh, this year so far? So it's just a way to, to kind of get people to start thinking about the, the resources that they're using from day to day. Uh, and then kind of a fun uh, educational activity that we do through our food services is climate friendly cooking demonstrations. And so that's just another way um, to, to get people to start thinking about uh, their behaviors and how, and how they might uh, modify their behaviors in order to um, help, help us combat climate change. So those are some of the educational activities um, that we'll be um, having in Earth Month. And pause, I'm trying to advance the slide, but I think I, oh, there it goes. All right, and so uh, in terms of things that we can do uh, together as a group, so uh, we are starting a food forest, which uh, is a new term that people are using, but I call it a community garden. But um, I think um, the food forest term kind of implies uh, the, the year round uh, aspect of the garden uh, and having, uh, having vegetables that um, are seasonal. Uh, so we're gonna start that hopefully uh, not, not too long from now. And then we're also gonna have a plant sale for National Garden Day. Our students are um, doing a, a green dorm certification pilot project. So getting students to think about uh, their behavior in terms of their, uh, their living in dorms and what they can do to use less energy and water. Uh, and then we're asking folks to make a commitment. What, what one thing will you do to do your part in reducing your impact on climate change? So we're asking all of our community members to make a commitment. What would you do to reduce your impact on climate change? And we're also gonna have a uh, spring clothing swap. Oh, again, we'll see if that happens. So I think I got one more slide here. I just wanted to bring everybody's attention. Uh, coming up here, uh, Bard College is putting together this virtual teach-in on climate solutions um, that you may be interested in participating in coming up on April 7th. So um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's my last slide. Great, thank you. I was muted. Uh, folks are still having some trouble with audio. I'm trying to send them all a message that they should use their phone if they're um, having that trouble. Hopefully, they'll get that message. Uh, at this, thank you very much, uh, Phil. Uh, Sister yeah. Pat is still not on, so we will continue at this point with the Archdiocese of Atlanta. Uh, presenting. Uh, we have two presenters, Susan Varlamoff and Kat Doyle. And as I said, all of their bios are in the handout, uh, in your control panel under handouts. Uh, Susan and Kat, uh, I am going to give control panel uh, the mouse to uh, first to Susan. Uh, do let me know if you need me to uh, control your slides. Go ahead, Susan and Kat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, okay, let's see. So, far, okay, there we go. Um, back at the time the Pope was putting out his Laudato Si um, encyclical, I had gotten wind earlier through Ted Turner's daughter, who has a uh, newsletter, that this was coming out. And so I um, talked to a friend of mine, a Catholic friend of mine who's a geologist, about possibly, uh, you know, doing something to work with the Pope. I approached the Archbishop, uh, Wilson Gregory at the time, and asked him if there's some way we could, as a Catholic biologist and he a geologist, we could do something with regards to the um, 
the encyclical, and he suggested that we do an implementation plan, an action plan for Georgia. So we got together with friends. Let's see if I can try this now. Yeah, you're going to have to do it. Um, okay. With, yeah, it's not working. With uh, colleagues at the University of Georgia, um, all, mostly scientists and all of whom are not Catholic, to write an action plan for the um, encyclical. And we took into account all of the different environmental issues <clears throat> the post brought up in this. And so we've got an interdisciplinary interfaith team. Rob was a co-author with me. Dr. Marshall Shepard is a, um, a world-renowned climate uh, scientist. There I am, Mark Reese is an engineer. Uh, Kate McGregor is the head of uh, Georgia Interfaith Power and Light and has been a tremendous support to us. Pam Knox is an agricultural engineer. David Sukhsri, an engineer. And then finally, Steve Vock is a, he's the head of the uh, Citizens Climate Lobby here in Georgia, but also a, he edited the work and he was a reporter for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. So, next, please. So our strategy was this. You know, we, at that moment, Pope Francis was like a rock star, and all of these scientists were frustrated with not being able to get their word out as far as, um, you know, taking action on climate change. And so we saw this tremendous opportunity working with Pope Francis and working through all the churches to use, to harness the power of the pulpit and the Pope Francis effect. We wanted to create a movement in all houses of worship to care for the earth and one another and offer simple practices that can be used across all religions and to use local resources. And so in the action plan, our resources, you know, recycling, what do you do for recycling electronics? Or if you want to uh, reduce water, where can you get a water audit or an energy audit for jo from Georgia Interfaith Power and Light? If you want a school garden, well, Laura Turner, she's got an organization that helps set up school gardens. And then we want to create a model for all the states. So we wanted the language to be simple, fairly generic, and yet the resources from our state. Next, please. The environmental issues that were in the um, encyclical, which was very comprehensive, are climate change, biodiversity loss, water pollution, air pollution, water shortages, and destruction of wildlife habitat. Next. So this is, so this is the front page of it. it I, for me, it's absolutely glorious. And we divide it into 10 chapters. Next, please. Let's see if I... Okay, yeah, when, we, when it came out, we had this incredible <laughs> unveiling at the University of Georgia. And we expected, you know, 20, 30 people, but it was, we had two to 300 people. And those, those of you that work at a university know how hard it is to get scientists together. They were all there and showed up. And that's like miraculous. And so we had a wonderful day. We had farmers, local farmers there, and a wonderful meal to celebrate the kickoff of, of this document. So the um, chapters in the in, uh, action plan are parish activities and education, energy conservation and efficiency, purchasing and recycling, transportation, water conservation, buying and sharing food, sustainable landscaping. Um, I have written a book on that, so I was able to use, uh, do that chapter easily, assisting climate vulnerable populations. Our scientists, our climate scientists, had done a, a um, study with his graduate student uh, on the whole state to showcase where the um, uh, citizens were most vulnerable, and then what can we do with young people, and finally political action. Next. So what I've tried to do is in my own church in Georgia, Lilburn, to set up a uh, creation care team and test a lot of these different things and see how many we can do and try to improve upon it. So there we are. Father Sonny uh, is our pastor, and we've got um, uh, a solid waste management expert of EPA. He's a, uh, for Region 4. We have several engineers. We have the um, extension agent, 
uh, because um, agriculture is a big issue here. Uh, a national, uh, a woman who is a national expert in organic produce because her company does that. We have someone who has done a number of videos and she's an expert in that. And then the deacon on the uh, far right. Very good comprehensive team. By the way, when I, um, Father Sonny allowed me to speak from the pulpit to ask for help uh, and tell the parishioners what I was doing. And we had 45 people sign up. This is the core team. And then when we need other help, I can go to these other people. Next, please. This is just an example of what you would find in a chapter. Essentially different um, ideas, uh, practices, and they're rated, moderate, easy. And so these are just some of the things. Now, also we have practices for the church and the facilities, as well as parishioners. So they can take some of these examples and bring them home. And we are trying to be the absolute demonstration site for sustainability in our community. Next. Okay. Um, what we have done just briefly, so we uh, made the action plan. We started getting it out throughout the archdiocese and then realized that we needed a point person. We needed a sustainability coordinator. The first thing we did was put in a pilot project. Uh, I raised the funds for a pilot project. It went extremely well over a year and we learned you know, what works, what doesn't work, different approaches. And now we have raised, Kat Doyle and I, $100,000, and we've got two sustainability coordinators. They're totally over, um, uh, un underpaid and overqualified. Extraordinary. So um, Kat will take it from here. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. And pause. I'm going to let you make um, the slide changes for me. As we get started, first of all, I wanted to. Uh, tell y'all that with the help of past Archbishop Wilton Gregory, our current administrator, Bishop Joel Compton, and our Archbishop-elect, um, Hartmeyer, I want you to know that we are thriving when it comes to sustainability and care for creation work. Our diocesan leadership is really what's made the difference. We're talking about this at all levels, and our Chancery Pastoral Center is actually leading by example. We're walking the walk, and what that does is it allows people to see what's going on, to see the results of things, and not just hear about it. So next slide. Um, Susan brought up the idea of sustainability coordinators. First, let me start by saying that our Ladata C initiative is fully funded by outside sources. We have the total support of the archdiocese, but we have to find the funds to take it to the next level by looking outside the church and thinking outside the box. So initially, we were looking at a sustainability coordinator of one position, but what we found out as we did our research is that it was too big for one person and that there were actually two different pathways we needed somebody who could strategize and we needed somebody who could oversee the programs. So we went back to our investors and we explained what the issue was. And the question came back to us, well, what would it take? And we said funding. And their passion, the funder's passion for this work and the research we had done showing that we needed two different coordinators got them to yes. So we are happy to say that we have funders who we've approached that are passionate about this, who are helping us with this. And also interesting to know, all of our funders are not Catholic, but they are people that are passionate about this. They recognize that with 1.2 million Catholics in North Georgia, we have an opportunity to really stand up and be counted and show how this work can be done in the faith community. And our investors asked us one thing about our Ladata C initiative. They wanted it to be a model. They wanted it to be something we could duplicate. So we have a strategist and his main work is to find that funding for us. He has to fund his position as well as the program. He is responsible for coordination and collaboration. So he's working to help us coordinate between the different faith communities, between the community 
um, organizations that are doing this type of work, and also with the government. Our particular office is located in the city of Smyrna, and there he, this particular sustainability strategist actually helped make the keep the Smyrna keep Smyrna sustainable. And so we're now able to collaborate between those two organizations. He also is responsible for overseeing what we put together as a diocesan sustainability advisory team. These are experts on care for creation and sustainability. They have access to funding and they have networking resources. Our program coordinator, on the other hand, he's the guy that's doing the parish audit. He has that engineering and that program management background. Um, he's working currently on energy and water audits. We do about 12 to 15 parishes and Catholic organizations a year. So over the course of um, five years, we're trying to get as many of our parishes up and running in terms of energy and water audits. We are also in the process of looking for, identifying and putting together waste recycling and purchasing audits. He is also um, overseeing our diocesan creation care team. And really this allows for parish and deanery networking. It allows us to communicate back and forth with the parishes and share best practices and resources. Next slide. Uh, when it comes to our, cre our creation care team, we support our parishes and we do it with gusto and we do it with loud voices. We do parishes, schools, and missions. So any place you see where I've written parish, please do understand that does mean our schools and our missions as well. Uh, when it comes to Ladapasi education, we help the parishes if they've never done presentations or if they need expert speakers to help us find that. We keep a speaker list for them. We've also been putting together online modules we also ask the parishes that if they do a presentation or they put together a module for their parish to share it with us so we can put it online to share with others. One of the biggest things we look at in our work is the ability to have measurable and replicable sustainability plans. That means we're working with the sustainability program coordinator to make sure not only are we just doing those audits and finding out that information, but we're putting it into a plan. That means there's a three to five year plan for every parish that gives them steps they can take, whether they're using the action plan or other resources. We want them to be moving toward being more sustainable. Pastor education and liturgical support, we all know that what really makes a difference is when our pastors or our deacons can talk about this from the pulpit. So we do provide homily help and liturgy themes. We get that from places like um, the Catholic Climate Covenant, the USCCB, and many other places. And finally, I have to tell you, we make sure that we give them strong diocesan resource support. Pastors talk to each other, and we are at the point now where the pastors are recognizing the fact that the archdiocese is supporting them in this work. We have the action plans, the Catholic Climate Covenant, and many other web pages, info and, le and links that we're providing, as well as giving people bulletin inserts that they can use. Next page. Finally, I wanna to talk to you about the new normal. It's a brave new world out there right now, and we are adapting. We're learning that our new ways of doing work may become our new normal. What um, we're learning about communicating right now, we believe is gonna make us better and stronger going forward. We're all doing it. We're working virtually. So now's the time to start using your diocesan social media. If you were thinking about using it and all that, you don't have a choice anymore. And I'm gonna give you an example of exactly how we made some changes today. Um, where it says our diocesan gathering and masses, our Ladaka see um, week green masses, we were like many others. We had it set up. We had a, a Ladaka see green mass ready to go. And what's happened is we can't do that anymore. So instead of amid the myriad of other masses that are being live streamed, we're pushing out through social media and through our other avenues to our pastors that during Ladato C week, take one or more of your live stream masses and make it a green mass. We're giving them all the information on how to do that, what, um, again, homily helps, that sort of thing.
but it'll be really cool to see many different live stream masses focused on a green mass. We've got lots of resources coming out there. We're giving our speakers um, education on how to do pre-recorded online modules. And finally, this is one of the coolest things I've gotten out of this. All those parish meetings that the green teams like Susan were having that I could not possibly get to, I'm arranging to join them in their virtual meetings. I'm learning from them. I'm able to get that information. I bring it back to the diocese. And now I can be a single point of contact to make sure that all those things that are going out, that we're celebrating those and people know what are going on. So there you have it, just some of the stuff we're doing in the Archdiocese of Atlanta. Thank you. Uh, this point, let me see if I can do something here. Yes, uh, Sister Pat, I see you are online. Uh, I would yeah. like to ask you to please now uh, come on. Uh, we have a limited time. We've got 20 minutes, 19 minutes left, uh, but I know that you can get us through and we have you and then Angelica with, from GCCM. Uh, so Sister Pat, um, Congregation of St. Joseph, please take it away. I can uh, move the slides for you if you like. Yes, please. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so we're the Congregation of St. Joseph. We were seven congregations that came together in 2007 to be one Congregation of St. Joseph. Our mission is that all may be one. Next slide. And we focused that mission when we first came together with generous promises, one of them being to strengthen, heal, and renew the face of earth another to risk our lives and resources to network with others to feed the hungers of the world and to collaborate with others to shift a global culture of power and privilege to a culture of mutuality and inclusivity. And in order, these are, these are important that you know that so that you'll understand what we did. So if you change to the next slide, Laudato C, si, when that came along, inviting us to look through the lens of Intercol ecology, we found that as a confirmation of what we were already doing. Next slide. So um, when we came together, uh, we formed a structure. We already had an environmental subcommittee of our peace and justice committee. And what they do is gather information to put in a monthly report with information, suggestions for prayer and political action for our entire congregation. Now that means um, sisters, associates and employees. So we're talking about altogether 1500 people. And then um, we wanted to focus on our living and our working sustainably so we formed local sustainability committees and these committees were at our local centers we um had to let go of one of our centers so we were down to six centers in the heartland of the u.s these local committees meet to see how they can make their living at their center more ecologically sustainable some of them have lunch bunch learning sessions with TED Talks, and then they come up with ideas from that. And we gather all of those local sustainability committees together. In the beginning, we were getting them together once a month by Zoom. Um, so for nine years, we did that, and now we meet with them seasonally. Next slide. Um, out of these meetings, we developed a land policy, which um, looked at all of our properties, our farmlands, our properties where our centers were located and our buildings and came up with some policies regarding um, holding our ecology, our land as a primary, um, a primary, gift that we were entrusted to care for and out of that uh that also took care of any owned mission homes also and the property around those 
And then we came up with a vehicle committee and that was to look at all of our cars and all the places where we were located. And they came up with a policy regarding buying cars to switch us into hybrid cars. And now we're switching to electric cars. And um, then we had spirituality centers. So their focus was to awaken the worldview of oneness with God and all creation through workshops, conferences, retreats, speakers, and offering educational opportunities, primarily for teachers and students. So we came up with a number of different opportunities for these children, but one of them was to connect students in other countries, Afghanistan, Nigeria, um, to work with us on Zoom. So these are little kids working through Zoom to draw pictures that flow from Kathy Sherman. She's a recording artist in our community. They take one of her songs, they produce art and they tell the story that brings up to one another and the world about how sacred the land is and how interconnected we are with that land. Um, next slide, please. Um, also, which I didn't put down here, we have a Ministry of the Arts. So we're gifted with a number of professional artists in our congregation. Uh, Mary Southerd, Pat Willems being two of them, and Kathy Sherman being a recording artist. So we developed that ministry to promote the vision of oneness with all creation through art and music. So all of this brought us to look at our mother house buildings. Now, by this time, they were called centers. So in order to do that, we came up with a direction statement regarding how we wanted our properties and buildings, um, what we wanted to do with these treasures that were entrusted to us and developed a direction statement. We, people had a month to pray over it, think about it. And actually it came through with all but one vote being positive to move forward with it. So that was the basis of our looking at our buildings. And we decided to create new living assisted care buildings um, in four of our centers. Um, and this was so that our mission could go on after us in those buildings. And it was to reduce the carbon footprint. We had looked at our old buildings, they were expensive and the carbon output was immense. So we developed local steering committees, lead committees, art and charism committees, design committees, history committees, ground committees. We had committees all over the place, all working at all these locales, uh, dreaming of how these buildings would look, how they would be decorated, the whole thing. We ended up by deconstructing four massive mother houses. And remember when you deconstruct, you use every single part of it to turn over to a different entity. The door, doorknobs, the anything, the bricks. And we watched these people carry these bricks as if they were sacred items, they are, but they recognized it, putting them in piles, taking care to get them to habitat and other places that are building things. Um, and we built these buildings all to lead gold qualifications. And they're partly solar powered. So we have uh, fields and rooftops and those things of solar. And then we realized that our living inside the buildings had to correspond to our, the outside of our building. So these are some of the things that we have come to all agree on that we would do in our centers and in our local houses. Next slide, please. Um, this is another example. And we really have our kitchens working on this. Another example. Another example, um, of course, recycling is great, but reusing is what we're after. Reducing and reusing. 
And so we tried to close the food loop. We've got gardens at all our centers um, and composting. Next slide, please. So in this, um, we wanted, of course, to reduce our fossil fuel use too. So this talks about our fleet of cars. And at each of our centers, we have a graph in the front lobby that keeps on moving. So it tells you, you know, how, ma how, ma how many trees you're saving today, how many trees you saved this month, how much water, how much electricity at your center. And then it shows you the whole congregation. So these graphs are always changing and keep the public aware of what we're doing. We also have signs throughout some of the new buildings and we're working on all of the buildings to have um, all of our living sustainably practiced uh, practices outlined in different parts, our kitchens, our lavatories. Okay, next slide, please. And so in this process, we've reduced our water usage by 46%, our energy by 36%, wow. our carbon by 58%. Our um, Heating systems and air conditioning systems are evaluated daily at every center to make sure they're up to speed. Yearly, we give a, a congregation report on each center and on the congregation as a whole on our carbon saving. And then um, every year, the employees, the sisters and associates were working on a uh, not an evaluation, but a progress report that they have to fill out um, on what they've done to increase their sustainable living and employees are held accountable for this also as well as sisters and associates next slide please so then this year we realized we needed to move beyond ourselves so um the season of creation we worked on sunday liturgies for all of our centers as well as lunchtime prayer services once a week with our employees and as well as information to go out by our, all of our social media outlets. We networked with other agencies in our locales and our diocese interfaith groups to produce prayers to start some of the marches that were held during the season of creation. Um, we ran movie cycles in our center and had ecumenical prayer services for the diocese that we actually worked on and offered our art to help promote. Um, we collaborated with the diocesan Catholic schools, Catholic Climate Covenant and the global climate, climate agencies to develop opening prayers for schools, grade one to six and junior and senior high and to offer suggestions for the day when some of our Catholic schools did not go to the climate strike, but worked in their schools. And um, then in addition, the March for Life in January, we decided that we wanted to be in the March for Life, but to offer a different perspective without causing conflict. So we offered our art for banners and prayer cards. And these were used in the March for Life in our cities, in some of your diocese adopted them. And also they were sent to Iowa for the Iowa caucus. Next slide, please. This shows a picture of the banner. And I think oh, um, at, at the bottom of it, it said care for life and care for all that sustains life. And then uh, we actually made 50,000 prayer cards, four different versions. There, uh, four different versions, 250 copies of each one that went all over the country. And for Earth Day, we've got a plan, we calling it Butterfly Champions. So our centers are putting together envelopes of um, seeds for pollinators and, oh my gosh, I forgot the name of the, the butterfly uh, tractor where they um, put their eggs, milkweed. And um, we've got envelopes with instructions on them and we're offering them to all of our academies. We called our former, former parish schools and we off, have offered to give presentations in those schools and distribute envelopes so students can plant butterfly gardens in their yards, at their beach houses, wherever they go. And 
as far as Laudato Si Day, we haven't gotten there yet. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sister Pat. Um, at this point, let me then move to Angelica. Let me get Angelica's things up. Uh, whoops, no, I don't want that one. Hold on, I want from Angelica's slide. Sorry about this, having to be moving around uh, from current slide. Angelica, um, it's yours to go with. Okay, thank you, Pat. So hi, let, everyone. Let me know if you move. Okay, let me try it. Um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Angelica Gonzalez Apple. I am the program manager for the Global Catholic Climate Movement. Um, and in view of the fifth year anniversary of Laudato Si, Pope Francis recorded a video inviting us all, the church, to participate in Laudato Si week. Uh, so that is May 26th to the 24th. And if you haven't had a chance to view that video, it's all available on the GCCM website. It's available on social media and also through YouTube. Um, but what we, he asked us is what kind of world do we want to leave to those who will come after us, to children who are growing up? And from hearing all your wonderful presentations, many, many of you are doing already just that. And so thank you for all your work. And OK, here we go. And so our work at the Global Catholic Climate Movement is to serve the church and to turn Laudato Si in action. Uh, we are Catholic, grounded in faith, driven by hope. We are brothers and sisters honoring the relationships we share. We are prophets of justice, calling for urgent, nimble, ambitious action. We take an integral approach, seeing everything is connected. And we are all on the way, committed to personal ecological conversion. So we're here to be of support um, and to be as a resource uh, to partners and to our diocese and churches as well. So our global Catholic um, climate movement, um, we have over 900 Catholic institutions and member organizations, grassroots leaders, uh, certified La Dato Si animators. So we offer an animators program and we work closely with the, the Vatican and the bishops worldwide. A little bit of background on uh, La Dato Si, as many of you already know, but, but before we, we proceed, it's worth making a clarification. When we refer a GCCM to La Dato Si message, we refer not only to the groundbreaking La Dato Si encyclical letter of Pope Francis, but mostly we also refer to the broader La Dato Si paradigm, our La Dato Si charism embodied by our famous canticle of the creatures of St. Francis of Assisi. It is true that the release of the prophetic Laudato Si encyclical in 2015 catalyzed the birth of our movement, um, and it has been a cornerstone of our ministry, but it's most importantly the 800 years old of Laudato Si paradigm. And I think that's really, really important as we speak to our parishes and our congregations that um, in, the, in the movement, it, is, it has been in our Catholic faith for over 2,000 years and we're putting it into action. Um, I think I'm not switching the slide. If you could just switch it for me, please. Um, so it is our hope that the encyclical, encyclical letter can help us to acknowledge the appeal immensely and urgently, urgency of the challenge we face. Next slide. So we as GCCM, our invitation to you all is to help you and help your groups and your community groups and people that you all work with, 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 work with live Laudato Si and animate others to live Laudato Si. And like I said, many of your presentations, it's already showing that in action. And I think the momentum is growing and the more you can better prepare the diocese with resources, the more people join on board. And that's what's amazing. Um, so this year, Catholics around the world will celebrate the fifth anniversary of Laudato Si, Pope Francis' milestone teaching on ecology and climate change. Over the, over the past five years, Catholic communities have taken concrete steps to protect our common home. So many have planted gardens, praying, um, and doing a lot of marches for climate change, but creating um, groups with Care for Creation. But the ecological crisis isn't slowing down and we need newer and bolder actions are needed. So that's why we wanted to mark not only the fifth year anniversary as something big um, and have uh, a worldwide movement uh, for this. 
So he had, Pope Francis has asked us to take next steps. At the same time when all of this came out of the video, um, the virus had not hit. And so we were gathering our partners and getting everybody to join the website, laudatosiweek.org, and partner up with us in the dicastery and show all the fabulous work you're doing. Um, but as we know, everything has changed, and many of you have pointed out different ways we can um, support that. And I think they're phenomenal suggestions, and we as GCCM are also here to help you provide resources if you haven't been able to, to your organizations to do those virtual gatherings, the green masses, more social media actions and different types of virtual actions that we can do within our communities. Um, we've done lots of uh, Lenten prayer services, also webinars, um, and just trying to get people knowing that we are, the movement is still continuing and we, like uh, they mentioned, there is a new norm and we are embracing that and moving forward. So thank you very much for your time. Um, my email is here. Um, if you have any questions or would like to know, know more, please uh, email me. Thank you. And thank you, Paz. Thank you, everybody. Um, at this point, I will ask folks that are on the webinar if they would uh, indulge us and stay with us for a few minutes, uh, especially if you uh, want to hear some of the questions. Uh, as you know, I will send all the questions to the panelists so they will get answered, but there are some questions that everybody might be interested in. Uh, let me make sure that I unmute everybody uh, because I had done that. Oops. Um, so I'm unmuting all of the panelists. Uh, this question is for Kat and uh, Susan. Can you say more about the green mass? To, to say more about that. So we what actually have mask? been doing a green mask now for four years. Um, we jumped on it immediately. It is something that is considered one of our um, archbishop's masses, along with the white mass, the red mass, the blue mass. What we've done, though, is made some changes with this year on our green mass. We are offering the opportunity for parishes to do their own green mass and the green mass is specifically meant to recognize those people who work with our earth and our environment and those who care about our earth and our environment so it's really pretty much for anyone but we specifically recognize those who work with the the earth and the environment this um by doing this we have the homily is focused on that. One of our bishops gives that mass, um, celebrates that mass. And then afterwards, we do locally grown, sustainable um, food for a luncheon. And we bring everybody together and give them an opportunity to talk about what they've been doing. This is also when we recognize um, our, what we call our green ribbon of excellence parishes. Those parishes who have done things to bring about sustainability within their parishes. So the green mass is, is, would be maybe similar to a red mass that you do or something where we're recognizing specific people and we're celebrating the fact that we're called to care for the environment. Great, thank you. Uh, Angelica, uh, could you say more about um, the paradigm, um, that St. Francis paradigm, as you called it, and how that is different from uh, how we look at Laudato Si today? I don't think it's different. I think it helps us look into our faith, especially as we are um, having conversations, and especially in communities that aren't uh, embracing climate change or embracing care for creation. Many people say this is something new. Um, this is something that uh, is, is, a, is, is just going to pass or climate change is going to happen. But when we talk about our Catholic social teachings, and then I think that's where, the um, where we can talk about how St. Francis saw a perspective of caring for our world in a different um, view. And that's what we need to highlight because it's, it's, it's something deep ingrained into our beliefs. And I think when people can look at that and that integral ecology perspective, then it opens up the conversation and, and especially for listening. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Thompson, a question for you. 
Uh, did you have any involvement in the divestment campaign at Seattle U? And do you have any advice to those involved with Catholic universities that haven't divested yet? Yes, so it took us about six years at Seattle U to kind of move through the process for divestment. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, what was the most important thing was our president, Father Steve Sumborg, really uh, felt that we needed to align our, our investments with our values as a university. And the students played a, um, a really big role in, uh, in, in moving, the, moving the whole divestment movement forward. And so I guess my recommendation uh, is to get the students to drive it because uh, administrators listen to students uh, because they're the customers. <laughs> and so, um, so that's, I think that was the most critical aspect at Seattle U um, for divestment. Great, thank you. Uh, and a question for Sister Pat. Uh, do you know of any other um, congregations that are doing similar work? Do you work together? Um, that is the kind of uh, knowledge that they want. I, I think a number of congregations are doing similar things. I know the presentations out of Dubuque, the Mercies. I think a lot of congregations, the BVMs. Right. Okay, uh, in order to uh, be, uh, cognizant of people's time. Uh, we will send the questions to all the panelists. Uh, you will receive an email uh, with the uh, recording and hopefully also with the slides within the next 48 hours. You will also receive the three handouts that are in your handout box. Uh, at this point though, uh, if you need more information, you can send us an email. I will put you in touch with the panelists if needed. Uh, I want to thank every single one of these presenters that has taken their time to create these wonderful presentations. Uh, want to also wish you all um, much health, uh, safety in the next few weeks. Uh, and until we meet again, uh, hopefully in April, uh, we'll have another uh, webinar. God bless you all. Goodbye. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you Thanks, Pat. Thank you.